What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about homebrews, hacks, and the future of the modding scene on the PlayStation 4. Now, a lot of you guys know about modding consoles, JTagging Xbox 360s, flashing Wii's, all these things from the past that people have done to kind of create workarounds uh, for homebrewing their consoles. And a lot of people do things like put older consoles on their current gen consoles like Nintendo's and TurboGrafx-16's. A lot of people do modding just so they can get games for free. I got some modded systems, I know what it's like, and I can understand the draw. Now, the PlayStation 4 seems to be the one console that's under the spotlight for the modding community, and we all know that if history is any indication of the future, there's always somebody who's going to crack the current generation of hardware. Or one piece of hardware I can actually give a lot of credit to that's been very, very hard for crackers to just actually crack open and do what they want to do with has been the PlayStation Vita. That thing has been so hard to crack, you had to have perfect timing to get your PS Vita cracked. And for the most part, Sony's been very successful with the security of the Vita. The PlayStation 4 doesn't seem like it's as uh, safe when it comes to detouring hackers, modders, and, and people who crack consoles because not only has this thing been modded before, they're actually moving forward with the mods that are available on this console. I'll drop a link in the description. Sony PlayStation 4 hack to create Linux Steam Machine. We are often hearing about people shoehorning various OS's, games, and apps onto new or old systems they clearly weren't designed for. Obvious examples are playing the classic first-person shooter game Quake on a Hitachi V422 oscilloscope or installing Windows 95 on an Apple Watch. However, today I heard of a much more useful pairing that realistically offers some potential for the future, running the Linux version of Steam on the PlayStation 4 and being able to launch and enjoy games at what looks to be an acceptable gallop. The video above shows the work of modder Osiris X who has managed to install Linux on his or her PlayStation 4 and then run Steam in big picture mode and play the game of Bastion. In operation, the Steam interface and games as you might at least partly expect on a system based upon modern x86 hardware. Linux was first demonstrated to be runnable on the PlayStation 4 back in December and Osiris X made use of the fail overflow code behind that. First of all, the PlayStation 4 was jailbroken before Linux could be installed. Osiris X chose to install Arch Linux, then of course the Steam Linux client was installed and some games downloaded and installed. You can read about the requirements and even find links to the system downloads here. There will be a link in the description. Notably, the PS4 in the experiment ran the rather long in the tooth PS4 firmware version 1.76. Sony doesn't make it easy for users to roll back firmware as its patches often include measures to prevent hacks and etc. PS4 users are aiming to get Ubuntu up and running with hardware acceleration on the console due to its close relation to the Steam OS. If you follow the above method and install Linux on your PS4, the system is said to be able to play, quote, most games when running low to mid graphics settings, end quote, at an acceptable and stable frame rate. Currently, the above installation steps and necessary old firmware mean that not many PS4 users are likely to fiddle with their consoles to get Steam running. However, it may be possible that the OS and system hacking above opens the door to people using Sony PlayStations as entry-level Steam machines. If an easy-to-boot Steam OS method was created, it could provide a lot more gaming fun and flexibility for PlayStation 4 users. I'm telling you now, man, I'm constantly amazed at what these hackers come up with. Uh, I, of course, I'm on the latest firmware, I keep my PS4 up to date, but if I did have firmware 1.76, this would be something I would probably be trying to do. I remember being on firmware 3.55 on the PlayStation 3 and remembering how great I felt that I was actually on the proper firmware to mod my PS3s. It's a great feeling where you can turn your console into more than it's intended to be. Trust me, as a person who knows what it's like to have a modded PSP, modded Wii, modded PS3, these things can be worth so much more than they're actually sold to be. You can have old consoles, you can have old ROMs, you can have different uh, media players, like I've got this media player on my PS3 that can actually play MKVs. All kinds of crazy stuff can be uh, homebrewed and allowed if you go about modding it the proper way. Kudos to anybody out there on uh, firmware 1.76. If you do have that firmware and you are willing to try the steps in the link in the description, just be careful because you may inevitably do something wrong and Godspeed. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. Are you going to try to mod your PS4? If not, tell me why. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did give a thumbs up to show support. If you guys are new to the channel now's your opportunity to subscribe and stay up to date with the latest news, gameplay, and reviews. I'm the Beastly Gamer and I'll see you guys next time.